Hello, and welcome to this session of the Microsoft Build 2025 conference. Uh, this one is called, sorry, I don't speak engineer, but let's try visualizing it. My name is Joseph Whiting. I'll be introducing myself in a second. Uh, but this is a session dedicated to how we can communicate better, how engineers can use different tools as a way of being understood better by maybe non-technical teams who uh, goes a little bit over their head and really focusing in on giving you some of those tooling so that you can uh, be better understood by non-technical teams. Now, um, like I said, my name is Joseph Whiting and I'll do a quick introduction for myself. Uh, I work at Lucid Software. I'm a solutions consultant. So I have spent four years helping people communicate better by using visualization tools like Lucid and other strong communication tools. My master's degree is in human capital management and business consulting, where I got from Lancaster University. And I have spent a large portion of my career going around to large companies, nonprofits, etc., helping people communicate better. Uh, and so I'm very passionate about this topic. And when I got the opportunity to come and speak, um, there were a lot of different things we could have talked about. We could have talked about AI, we could have talked about uh, various coding tools that Lucid has. However, um, I wanted to talk about something that's a little bit more personal. Now, I have a lot of engineers in my life. Um, my father-in-law, my stepfather, um, multiple siblings are engineers. And so I work with, and I work and I talk with engineers all the time. And I love it. I think engineers are brilliant people and the way that they think is fascinating to me. And as someone who has made a career out of communication, I have found it really interesting um, to, to learn and to talk with engineers to try and provide ways that I could help them um, as they have tried to communicate in the past. Now, in today's discussion, I'm going to show you some of the tools uh, that I think are very useful to that point. Now, if you'd like to connect with me, uh, my LinkedIn is Joseph M. Whiting. Very excited to continue the conversation after this presentation. <clears throat> Jumping in, though. This is, this seems like an obvious statement, right? Communication is a core function of any organization. It sounds fairly obvious and you'd hope that it would be. However, if you think about it, when you look at the investments that a company makes, uh, very rarely is communication or collaboration seen as an area of investment, similar to maybe revenue generation or personnel or infrastructure or these different pieces, right? Collaboration as a function within a business is rarely measured and rarely communicated back on. This is a problem and it's actually evident in industry. Now, um, to further clarify this point, in organizational behavior, organizational dynamics, we sometimes look at the organization like a brain. Now, a brain is made up of individual cells called neurons. They communicate to one another and that's how a brain works. That's how we work. In, in effect, you have these individual cells that reach out and connect and by connecting, generate all the things we sense and feel. Now, sometimes that connection is stronger and better. Sometimes it's weaker. Uh, that is actually a direct correlation to how valuable that neuron is in the brain. If the neuron has poor connection, its value to the brain is weaker, right? If it has stronger connection, then it generates more value for the brain. Now, as an organization, we take out neurons and we put people in there. The ability to communicate, and the ability to share ideas, spread ideas and collaborate is the, is the core value of a person in a knowledge working environment, like the ones that you and I work in. This is where this comes in. And this is, this is quoting Forbes, but 86% of employees and executives cite the lack of effective collaboration and communication as the main cause of workplace failures. Not as like a, a side cause, not as a, you know, um, down the road cause. It is the primary cause of workplace failures. Collaboration and communication, 86%. That is a fascinating statistic because you'd think that if we knew the main cause of why we're not working better together, we would invest in trying to find a better way of communicating and a better way of collaborating. Now, today I wanna to talk to you um, 
about that. I want to talk to you about investments you can make in that. And it's not, you know, just software. It's not just lucid. The idea of how do I overcome some of the communication barriers that are inherent in people being in different backgrounds, people investing their times in learning software versus learning marketing versus learning product management, create these differences and these divides that make the connection more difficult. Now, I believe that one of the best ways that we can overcome this kind of collaborative dysfunction that we get from having different backgrounds, different careers, etc., is visualization. During my master's degree, we actually looked at how, um, during my master's dissertation, we actually reviewed how individuals have very different ways of responding to words or written versus heard uh, problem solving, etc. But visualization of problems actually led to more creative responses than any other form of, of prompting. When an individual was able to see a problem, they were able to comprehend it faster and generate more ideas that resulted in a better response overall to problem solving. So the core thing we're going to be talking about today is how can you visualize the problems you're experiencing, the opportunities that are on the, uh, that are out there in order to better, uh, in order to better succeed in your careers and in your communication with the rest of your organizations. <clears throat> now, to core off this, um, this is something I can't talk about too much given the condensed version of this session, but Lucid has invested into creating a framework that is really useful to individuals as they're trying to um, evaluate their own communication at their own organization. Principles such as clarity, impact, uh, context, conflict, and autonomy are great tools to look at and great principles to look at as you're trying to improve the collaborative nature of your organization. This is something that Lucid can dig in deeper with you if you wanna reach out to your account team. This is an area that we uh, love to work with our customers to see how we can help them improve on these five principles um, of collaboration. Now, I'm gonna jump in to the first piece, which is visualizing the problem or visualizing the current state. I wanna show you a few different ways that people are doing this in Lucid right now. One way is using Lucid Scale. Uh, if you're not familiar, Lucid Scale is a product within Lucid which allows you to visualize your cloud architecture. Now, I've brought in an AWS, uh, I've brought in, sorry, I've brought in a um, Azure environment here, and I have all these different assets that I can visualize instantly. Now, say that I'm actually going to, I need to review the location of different assets, and maybe I'm going through a global migration or, or something to that nature. Maybe it would be useful for me to come in here and actually visualize the locations of all the different assets that I have in my environment. I can do that using conditional formatting. Being able to visualize um, different metadata behind the objects on the face of them. So I can come in here and I can actually visualize, all right, so, this one is uh, Eastern United States, etc. If I wanted to, I could look at encrypted data versus non-encrypted data. And I can call out secure, security concerns as I'm going through um, this environment. <clears throat> now, jumping into some of the other ways that we can use Lucid. Oh, give me a second here. There we go. This is actually one of my favorite examples. This is... Uh, this is based off of something I did for a customer recently where executives were really pushing hard <laughs> for um, a massive restructuring of their entire financial platform and it inquired a ton of moving pieces. You're probably getting a little freaked out by seeing this diagram, but over a hundred shifting parts um, all needing to be moved by different teams at different times. The actual executors of this were very concerned because executives weren't really understanding the conflicts that were occurring as work was being done and the bottlenecks that were being caused. So product leaders sat down with me for roughly eight to 10 hours and we mapped out the dependencies of all the work that was going on. And we were able to identify some critical blockages that were occurring because of the way the work had been laid out. This led to 
instantly better communication, more meetings set up for collaboration, different forms of collaboration that would allow them not to have to do just meetings, but really make sure that their meetings were smarter when they did have them. This created a fantastic opportunity for the head of strategy to go to her teams, uh, to, to her executive board and say, hey, this spaghetti monster, and I believe that's what she actually called it, is the real reason that we are struggling to get this moving and created a lot of um, buy-in from executives who were saying, oh, absolutely, I can see it, I can comprehend, I can see, it. oh gosh, there's a lot of bottlenecks going on here. There are circular dependencies where pieces of work have been distributed between two different teams that require each other for things to be worked out. And with these really complex projects, it becomes increasingly important to have visualizations like this to communicate back and say, hey, there are some serious problems or some serious opportunities that need to be addressed in order for us to move forward. <clears throat> now, I've talked a little bit about how you can visualize your current state. What I want to talk about now is visualizing the future state. This is a template that, uh, that we built for a customer who was trying to model out their Azure environment and look at the costs of changes. So what they did is they brought in their Lucid Scale uh, environment, and then after doing that, let me, let me actually show you, they were able to turn that automatically into a Lucid, Lucid Chart Diagram. From that Lucid Chart Diagram, they were able to copy over the different assets and resources, and uh, using Lucid's formula systems, actually calculate the hourly and monthly costs um, for this particular uh, application. Now, the really great thing behind this is that they can duplicate this and create a future state and look at that future state. And as they bring in additional resources to their application, you'll notice that they can instantly calculate the changes in cost from the previous current state. So they can come in here and they can say, okay, the new monthly cost is gonna be something around this with no discount, that's gonna look like this, and with a 20% discount, it will look like this. If that discounting changes, say 25%, we can see how that changes from the current state as well. So they can actually model out the costs of their two different environments using Lucid. They actually do this by creating templates as well so that they can have uh, applications that are reused quite a bit come in and, and then, um, bring in those resources, which they've also assigned the different prices that they get uh, onto those mappings. So this is a really great example of how you can do cost modeling inside of Lucid to visualize your environments and visualize the changes and the impacts those will take on your budget. <clears throat> now, jumping in, and once again, I'm sorry if I feel like I'm whizzing through this, you're always welcome to reach out to us. We're happy to dig deeper into any of these solutions that we're showing you. Um, but I did want to talk a little bit more about project management and how Lucid has invested in helping you in creating your planning and project management uh, within your teams. I'm going to be using both the ADO integration and the AirFocus integration, which Lucid recently acquired. Um, this is an example of an ADO, uh, ADO cards that bring in different issues uh, from your ADO environment and visualize them on a timeline. As I move this, it is bi-directionally synced and it maps back to um, Azure DevOps. <clears throat> now, as I move these around, you'll notice that we have some of these that are linked work items. I can import these and they'll actually automatically show up with that linking. Now, if I'm mapping this out for the first time, I can also draw and create um, successors, etc. I can I can map out dependencies within Lucid that are bi-directionally synced in Azure DevOps. So I'm gonna you know make this a child, etc. You can map those out. Once again, as I move the time, that's bi-directional. Um, as I change the status, the owner, etc. These all go back into Lucid. Uh, these all go back into my Azure DevOps environment and automatically are updated there. Now, um, similarly, and the uh, AirFocus one works exactly the same, we can map out the work that we're doing via sprints. So I can come in here and as these have the different, um, different estimates of work, 
we can map out uh, the, oh, looks like we have too much going on in sprint one. So I can map this out to the various teams to ensure that we are the different team members to ensure that we're getting to a point where everything is equally balanced and we're able to, to function from there. This is an example of um, using capacity planning, which is a new feature within Lucid uh, to help teams as they're doing their sprint planning. <clears throat> now, um, this is just the beginning of uh, just, a, just a hint of, of some of the things that Lucid can do with this. Uh, there are a lot of different elements of the dynamic planning that we can do, whether it's mapping it out by assignees. So right now you'll see we don't have any assignees in this. But once you have those, you can actually map out, um, for instance, if I wanted to assign this to, uh, I'll, I'll show it over here, but if I wanted to map this to Sky Marshall, instead I could map it to myself. And like I said, all of this is bidirectionally mapped. So that can automatically be changed there as well. Um, different elements that include that are included within that are showing um, progress charts, progress mapping. I can edit this real quick uh, by card count. We can see who that Kira is obviously taking on a lot of that work and we can map out accordingly from there as well. So just some really great stuff that Lucid has done to help you as you're planning out your future opportunities visually. And like I was saying, visual communication is proven to increase creativity, to increase the speed at which we comprehend one another and is therefore a great tool for us to consider as we're looking at how we're communicating with one another. Now, at this point, I have to wrap up really quickly because I think we're, we're getting kind of close on time. But I did want to thank you for your time. Thanks for uh, watching some of these demos and really hope that you enjoy the rest of your conference. Please reach out if you have any questions. My email is jwedding at lucid.co. You can also reach out to your Lucid account team um, to dig into any of the things that I've shown you today. Your feedback is important, um, and please come see us at our booth at uh, 404, bit of a, a bit of humor there, and very excited to see you. So thank you once again. My call to action would simply be, please try and visualize one conversation you're currently having or one problem you're currently having. Really go into any visualization software you want. I recommend Lucid and try to visualize it. I promise you, you're going to have a much more uh, successful time communicating by leveraging visualization tools as you do it. Thank you so much and hope you have a great rest of your day.